everyone, it's Officer Dan here on this cold blustery day out in Albuquerque, Nuevo Mexico. I am sitting in my personal little tinkering garage and I have quite a few projects here. Um, got the motor out of my GTR, which is why I'm here to talk to you guys today. So I have been absolutely enamored by all the videos that I've seen online of everybody doing the dry ice blasting. It's just like one of those satisfaction things where you see a dirty part and then it's like brand new underneath when they're done with it. Uh, unfortunately, dry ice blasters are in the 10 to 15 to 25 thousand dollar range, which is absolutely out of my budget. So enter the Sanit Max SM1000. I popped onto Amazon and I checked out the lesser priced ones. There's two available. There's one that was cheaper than this and then there was this one. I read the reviews on the other one. They weren't so hot. So I got a hold of the company and worked out a deal for me to make a review video on this thing as it sits. Now, this thing came crated up looking amazing. I haven't actually opened it yet. I'm going to do that in front of the camera. Now, what I haven't been able to find is the dry ice media needed to blast this. This takes the 1 8 inch rice pellets and that has been like pulling teeth to find. I finally worked out a deal with air gas to get the first shipment of that stuff ever in Albuquerque. So we're going to be giving it a try tomorrow, but I wanted to get this thing unboxed and set up and ready to go. So when that dry ice hits, I'm going to do nothing but blasting or at least learning how to do this and then maybe do some blasting. All right, let's get this thing open. So far, everything looks pretty good. The unit's packed in there nice and tight. I'm going to get the rest of these wooden planks off and see what we got going on. And just like that, there it is. It's already pre-assembled other than a lot of the accessories, which I will go over in just a few as soon as I get everything going it's on wheels that have locks it's got a remote I'll have to read about what that actually does it's got holders for all the attachments and so on and so forth it's got the in and the out uh, the fuse panel on the side and the nice part is is that it doesn't need to run on 220 I have 220 here but I really wanted something that if I needed to bring it to my house and use it I could absolutely do that. So, this was a big thing for me, was not having it be 220. Comes with a bunch of other stuff. Some safety glasses. Some uh, ear protection. An ice scooper, which is nice because I don't have one. And some gloves. Luckily, I have my con size out, so I'll just be using those. This is the hopper where the ice goes. You have your settings, you have your air pressures, you have your ice output adjustment there. And that's really it. So, as soon as the dry ice comes in tomorrow, I'm going to fire this thing up and see what we can get done. Okay, I had to go buy some fittings and some other accessories. Got the instruction manual sent to me last night by them. So I kind of understand what everything is. That round plastic thing that I didn't know what it was. It's supposed to be a shield. For your hand but it won't fit over this tip so you can't use it with that one but it will work with all those other ones i have all the lines now hooked up coming from my air my compressor's on the other side of that it's a pretty small compressor so we'll see if that's enough i watched a bunch of youtube videos on people that do dry ice blasting and decided that a line dryer was going to be the way to go so got that installed all that stuff Nothing's leaking. The air works. Oops. Air works. So that's good news. Don't know if the ice works because I don't have ice yet. That's all I'm waiting for right now is the dry ice to arrive and then we can start blasting because this is uh, pretty nasty, it turns out. So I got the 500 pounds of dry ice rice, which is conveniently already frozen together. 
So it's a big block of that, but luckily it chunked apart pretty easily. Comes in this container. This was the minimum quantity I could buy. I already got some loaded up in the machine, so we're gonna give it a test. Seems like I need some more air pressure. That's working. Kind of. Okay guys, still still running into an issue. Um, got my dry ice rice, it's the 1 8 inch small pellets. Put that in. Uh, bought a brand new compressor that does 35 CFM at 80 PSI. Uh, right now we're sitting at about 150. That's what it says on here, power's on. Air is stable. Ice is on, got it in between 40 and 50. And no, no ice comes out still. Uh, I've got a solid 90 PSI here. But no, I mean, there's a little tiny bit of ice, but it's not doing anything. And the ice is, it seems like it's moving. I don't know if it's just melting in there. But yeah, it doesn't. Not doing much of anything on the, the blasting side of things. So after seeing this thing fail miserably, I realized 100% that I did not have the CFMs nor the PSI to actually make the machine work, which was super disappointing because I had to pack everything up and head over to my buddy Shay's shop to actually get some work done. So after many trials and tribulations and uh, mistakes that were made, uh, buying a new compressor, hooking up all the new lines. We still didn't have the CFM needed, even though it said we did, but because we reduced it down to quarter inch, it didn't work. So I came over to my buddy's Shea shop, 10 tenths, um, and used their Manly 3 compressor air system, which uh, did everything that this thing needed to do now. Unfortunately, the rice is now four days old and has a lot of moisture in it, so it's not working as good as it should, but it's not the machine's fault, it's the rice's fault. And that's my fault for not being prepared. But, as you can see, it definitely took most of the corrosion off. It blasted this completely clean from where it wasn't before. I'm gonna try to do a little bit back here, and then this purple spot. So there's the before, and then I'll do a before there, and then I'll come back in and we'll do an after get all this cleaned up and see what it looks like. So there is the after, after about maybe four minutes of going back and forth and it's a Almost night and day difference. Of course, I missed a few spots because I'm not being super thorough. I just wanted to make sure everything works, but it's looking, it's looking pretty good. I tried almost all of the attachments and found that the skinny metal rod works the best. I'm assuming I can use that one with the 90 degree tip on it if I need to get into some hidden places. The PVC one isn't the best because it freezes into a certain position and then it's just like one of the metal rods so but for the price point of this machine oh i also did this too um the price point of this machine i think you you really can't go wrong with it it's it's solid as long as you have the air pressure and the cfms to get it done it, it does everything that the fifteen to twenty thousand dollar machines do. It's just a little more analog. If you're looking to start a dry ice blasting business, I mean, you buy a couple of these, two or three of these, and you're 
still way less than buying one of the other ones. So, so one thing that we do want to know is that it obviously gets the grime and crust off of the underside of that thing, but will it get it off the inside of a cylinder head slash the backside of a valve is uh, yet to be determined. So that could be interesting. So we're gonna give it the old college try. All right, so that is the after. The valve's down there and that's what it looked like before. Pretty gross and that's the after. So it absolutely will remove carbon deposits. Pretty gross. Now talking about the tips. This one obviously flows the most. You can really crank the ice up on this one and do some heavy duty blasting. Like if you needed to get the heavy grease off, um, it does a pretty big spot, but you go through your air much, much faster. This one was the one that I used the most. It's the thinner of the tubes, a little more accurate. This one is great because it has a 90 degree on the end of it. This one, like I said, it's good on paper, but as soon as it freezes, you can't adjust it to put it anywhere. So I'm going to tell them to maybe try for a metal one that has sections to bend. This one, again, you have to have super high CFM to use it. It, it just goes through the ice way faster as well, but it does do a pretty wide swath when you're going across stuff. So those are the different tips. I've used all of them now and they work pretty good. Um, one of the other pretty funny things on this is that it has a quitlet and a out of the ice button. Uh, basically turns the machine on and off, turns the air on and off. Maybe they, I don't know, it's kind of funny. Now I 100% jumped into this having no idea how to do it, what I needed, what was going to be involved, how to get the rice, ice, how to, I didn't know anything. I just jumped in and said, I wanna do this and made a bunch of mistakes along the way that hopefully this video will cause you not to make. First mistake I made was getting the dry ice blaster and not having a source of dry ice rice. Uh, it was a huge pain to get the supply chain going and it took almost four months for me to get dry ice rice into Albuquerque. It was getting to the point where I was going to have to drive out to Phoenix, get dry ice rice, drive it back to Albuquerque and then return the container to them later on because you can't buy less than 500 pounds. Know that first before you get into it. See if you can even get dry ice rice in your city or somewhere near your city. Step one. Step two. Now this is a machine on the lower end side of things, which is great. It's an introduction price point to A, either do it for yourself. If you have a shop, it would be great. Or if you want to start a small business doing it, it's a much easier pill to swallow at $3,800 or $3,000 or whatever this thing costs versus buying one of the big boy machines at $10,000 and up. So there's that. Now third, the biggest mistake that I made was thinking that this uh, 150 PSI, two horsepower, 33 gallon, 6.4 CFM at 90 PSI was going to do much of anything. And it would barely even blow the ice out of the end of the wand more than like, so uh, ended up having to spend $3,000 on this compressor, um, which I needed anyway. So this wasn't something that I didn't want to get. I needed to get this for my shop. But do know that before you get into doing any kind of dry ice blasting, you need a minimum of 35 CFM at like 90 PSI. So don't even try if you don't know somebody that has a shop or you're not planning on getting this. now. I had to order another one. So I'm $6,000 deep into compressors, but that will be 60 CFM at 100 PSI, which should be more than enough to do it because I brought it to Shea's shop and it worked absolutely fine. They have three compressors, uh, but I don't even need that much. I think this will be just fine because that's the only thing using air. Now, one other major mistake that I did make um, in the CFM wars that I've been having 
uh, on top of having to get another one of these, because I do plan on starting a business with this, is reducing from three quarter inch fittings down to half inch fitting down to quarter inch fitting. So that is severely limiting and then having another junction on the other side of that and then another junction where it actually plugs in. So after I get the compressors hooked together, I'm gonna to run one single half inch line all the way into the dry ice blaster and I should be good to go for CFM and PSI. That being said, worth it to start a business for this because there's none of this in Albuquerque, 100%. Worth it for a hobbyist? Absolutely not unless you know somebody that has shop air and you can just go borrow that from them then it would be 100 percent worth it to buy this machine now i'm gonna head back into the other garage and give my final thoughts about how everything went other than the mistakes that i made that hopefully you won't make in the first place now as for the final review of this machine brass tax it is the second cheapest one on amazon a fantastic buy if you are a shop that is just looking to clean a few parts. It is a fantastic buy if you're a hobbyist that has access to shop air. It is an absolutely fantastic buy if you're buying this as an ancillary machine to one that you already have and you don't want to spend another ten to $15,000 on one. Um, or as a backup in case something happens to your main machine or it freezes or clogs or whatever, then you can bust this one out and get your work done. It is limited on nozzles, which I don't know if I can actually get different nozzles for this, um, but I would like to see a bigger range of nozzle available for this machine. Uh, the plastic one that freezes into whatever position that it is was kind of useless, so I wish that they would have had a, a metal one that you could bend into whatever position that you want. Um, and one that was maybe a little wider, the, the opening was a little bit thinner, so that I could do a wider area of work um, without blasting through so much ice and so much air. Um, the only adjustment that you have is the rate of ice that comes out of the machine from zero to 100%. Uh, I found that in between 10 and 20 was the magic for the smaller diameter pipes and up to 40 for the bigger diameter pipes. Anything above that, it intended to clog. Um, and that may be the, the dry ice rice that I was using. Don't know, but it worked great other than that. And that's it. That's the only adjustment that you have on this thing. We did find that the higher the PSI was uh, with whatever CFM we were using, the absolute better it would be. And in my garage, using my air with this, with this one compressor, it, I didn't even need ear protection. At Shea's shop, absolutely needed ear protection. It was super loud. Uh, when you are on the 10 to 30 range, I would say, of the, the ice, the hopper lasts plenty long. You don't need to worry about that. When you have it up in the 50 to 60 range, it goes pretty quick. So just keep that in mind. And you will have to be constantly going to your hopper and filling it up. Like I said, unfortunately, I didn't get to do everything that I wanted, but I have another compressor on the way. I will have 60 CFM of usable pressure at 100 PSI. And I think this thing is absolutely, absolutely gonna rock and roll. Uh, another advantage is that it's pretty lightweight. It was easy to get in and out of the back of the truck. It was easy to transport everywhere. The hoses are easy to get on and off when need be, and you can put a quick disconnect on it if you felt so inclined to make it even easier, which is I think what I'm actually going to do is thread a quick release on it so I could just plug it in and take it off without having to crack it loose every single time. Things that I wish that it had was adjustable air pressure on the actual machine itself. I wish that it had a little bit more capacity in the hopper uh, for when you're using the higher amounts of dry ice. But then again, those are features that the much, much, much more expensive, is that $7,000 more worth of machine? I don't think so. So all in all, I'm gonna definitely give this thing a seven out of 10, just because of not the actual machine itself or how the machine works, but because of the attachments that it comes with the hose tended to freeze up when you'd use it for a long time and get really stiff. So possibly having some sort of insulation would be fantastic. Uh, the handle actually got really cold even through the foam pad after using it for quite some time. So even with gloves on, it was still a little bit cold. And those are the things that are keeping it from being a 10 out of 10. 
but seven out of 10 is super solid for this thing. And I can highly recommend it for all those reasons that I listed earlier in this video. Thank you so much for watching. This is Officer Dan, and hopefully next time you'll see me actually cleaning this engine bay. Peace and enjoy.